Medicines can ensure a lengthy life, but not necessarily a healthy life. My topic for today is Integrative Learning on Analgesics in a Dental Clinic. This presentation is guided by Dr. Bhushan Bhagat sir. In this presentation, we'll see what exactly an analgesic is, its classification, comparison between the two main classes of analgesics and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs in detail. So what exactly is algesia? It is an ill-defined, unpleasant sensation usually provoked by an external or internal noxious stimulus. And drugs given in a state of algesia are analgesics. So analgesics are drugs that relieve pain regardless of its source and type without significantly altering consciousness. Analgesics relieve pain as a symptom without affecting its cause. A small tip here, while learning a definition, it's better to break it into points and memorize the keywords in it. It becomes easier. The classification of analgesics. Analgesics are classified as peripherally acting, non-opioid, non-narcotic, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and centrally acting opioid, narcotic, morphine-like analgesics. So this is a table that shows the difference between NSAIDs and opioids. So NSAIDs have weaker analgesic effect when compared to opioids. Secondly, NSAIDs act peripherally, whereas opioids act both spinally and supraspinally. NSAIDs do not depress the central nervous system, whereas opioids are known to cause CNS depression. Now, CNS depression is a state that can result in decrease in the rate of breathing and heart rate, loss of consciousness, and probably lead to coma or death. It is a result of inhibited brain activity. The next point is NSAIDs offer no abuse liability, whereas opioids have high abuse potential. Abuse potential is the likelihood that a drug can be used in an intentional and non-therapeutic way to achieve psychological pleasure. NSAIDs do not cause dependence, whereas opioids can cause physical and mental dependence. Now, the three main actions of NSAIDs are the antiparatic action, the anti-inflammatory action, and the uricosuric effect. The uricosuric effect is the action of drugs by virtue of which there is an increase in the excretion of uric acid in the urine, thus reducing its concentration in blood plasma. Now, these three actions are not seen in case of opioids. Coming to the classification of NSAIDs. Now, NSAIDs are classified based on their selective or non-selective inhibition of cyclooxygenase enzyme. Cyclooxygenase enzyme is found to be bound to the endoplasmic reticulum of the cells. It is of three types. Cyclooxygenase type 1 or the constitutive type acts in physiological conditions. Cyclooxygenase type 2 or the inducible type is induced in inflammatory cells by pathological stimulus. Cyclooxygenase 3 is present in the brain. So this is the classification, wherein the class 1 is non-selective cyclooxygenase inhibitors, which includes salicylates, propionic acid derivatives, phenomates, enolic acid derivatives, acetic acid derivatives, and pyrazolone derivatives. Class 2 is of preferential cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors, which includes drugs like nimesulide, diclofenac, acyclofenac. The third class is of selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors, which includes silicoxib, paracoxib. And the last class is of analgesic antipyretics, 
with poor anti-inflammatory action. This class includes para-aminophenol derivative, that's it, that is paracetamol, pyrazolon derivatives, and benzoxazosin derivatives. Now the mechanism of action of NSAIDs. Physiologically, phospholipids get converted to arachidonic acid by the action of phospholipase A2 and arachidonic acid further by the action of cyclooxygenase enzyme gets converted to prostaglandins and its isomeric forms. Now prostaglandins, specifically prostaglandin I2 and prostaglandin E2 are pain mediators. Thus, NSAIDs inhibit cyclooxygenase either selectively or non-selectively and bring about their effect. Since all the NSAIDs except selective cyclooxygenase 2 type inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins and its isomeric forms, there are certain adverse effects of the drugs. So the main and the most common adverse effect is gastric mucosal damage. This manifests as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea or constipation, dyspepsia, epigastric pain and bleeding and ulceration. This is mostly seen as an effect of high dose aspirin. To minimize these effects, NSAIDs are taken after meals or with food. Also, drugs such as misoprostol sold under the brand name Cytotec can be used to prevent gastric ulceration. The second adverse effect is hypersensitivity, which is relatively uncommon and manifests as rash, bronchospasm, rhinitis, edema or an anaphylactic reaction with shock which may be life-threatening. The incidence of intolerance is highest in patients with asthma, nasal polyps, recurrent rhinitis or urticaria. Aspirins, aspirin use should be avoided in such patients. Another adverse effect with the use of aspirin is Ray's syndrome. The use of aspirin to control fever during viral infections in children is associated with an increased incidence of Ray's syndrome, which is progressive encephalopathy with hepatic dysfunction. However, acetaminophen or paracetamol as it is commonly known is recommended as a substitute for children with fever of unknown etiology. The other adverse effects include sodium water retention, increase in the potential for bleeding, risk of myocardial infarction, and headache confusion vertigo. This flowchart depicts the actions carried out by specific prostaglandins in specific organs and how due to inhibition of cyclooxygenase enzyme by NSAIDs, certain adverse effects are seen. The main adverse effect is gastrointestinal mucosal damage in which physiologically prostaglandin E2 brings about gastric pro protection by increasing mucus secretion, increasing bicarbonate and increasing mucosal blood flow. But since NSAIDs inhibit COX-1 and thus causing hindrance in prostaglandin synthesis, there is a risk of peptic ulcers and GI bleeding. Similarly, in kidneys, there is a risk of sodium water retention, hypertension and hemodynamic acute kidney injury. Also, by the action of NSAIDs, there is inhibition of thromboxane A2, which is a potent platelet aggregating factor. Indications and contraindications of NSAIDs. So, NSAIDs are indicated in control of post-surgical pain, relief from painful dental conditions, they are effective in fever, also in rheumatoid arthritis, and lastly, in post-myocardial infarction and post-infarct patients. 
The contraindications include in patients with history of aspirin sensitivity. Secondly, they are not recommended in pregnancy. Then, in patients with chronic liver disease. Also, aspirin should be avoided in diabetics, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Also, in children with viral fever and G6PD deficient patients. The drug interactions of NSAIDs. When NSAIDs are given with diuretics, they decrease the diuretic action. Also, when given with beta blockers and AC inhibitors, they decrease the antihypertensive effect. When given with anticoagulants and alcohol, they increase the gastrointestinal bleeding. Hence, alcohol and anticoagulants should be avoided with NSAIDs. The difference between aspirin and paracetamol. Chemically, aspirin is a salicylate, whereas paracetamol is a paraaminophenol derivative. Secondly, aspirin irreversibly inhibits cyclooxygenase enzyme, whereas paracetamol reversibly inhibits cyclooxygenase enzyme. Aspirin is known to have potent anti-inflammatory action, whereas paracetamol has poor anti-inflammatory action. Aspirin causes gastric irritation, peptic ulcers, and bleeding, whereas paracetamol is not known to cause gastric irritation. Aspirin can lead to acid base and electrolyte imbalance, whereas paracetamol does not cause acid base and electrolyte imbalance. At low doses, aspirin has antiplatelet action, whereas paracetamol has no such action. In case of aspirin toxicity, there is no specific antidote, whereas in case of paracetamol toxicity, N acetylcysteine is the antidote. Aspirin is contraindicated in patients with asthma and peptic ulcer, whereas paracetamol is a preferred analgesic antipyretic in asthma and peptic ulcer. Also, because of its risk to cause race syndrome, aspirin is not given in children with viral fever, whereas paracetamol is considered to be safe in children with viral fever. Now, here are some guidelines that we can use while prescribing NSAIDs in a dental clinic. Firstly, for mild to moderate pain with little inflammation, paracetamol 500 mg can be given. In post-extraction cases, ibuprofen or ketorolac can be given. In patients with gastric intolerance, paracetamol is the preferable drug. Patients with history of asthma or anaphylactoid reaction to aspirin, nimesulide, paracetamol, and COX-2 inhibitors are preferred drugs. Also in pediatric patients, paracetamol, aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen. Due to risk of race syndrome, aspirin should be avoided unless viral fever is ruled out. In pregnancy, paracetamol is the safest. In patients with hypertension, diabetes, ischemic heart disease, epilepsy, and other patients receiving long-term medication, the possibility of drug interaction with NSAID should be considered, and so consultation from a physician is recommended. Patients with risk for cardiovascular diseases should avoid etoricoxib or selecoxib. Ibuprofen or low-dose aspirin may be used in such cases. Now, NSAID is in emergency. So injection diclofenac sodium is used in case of emergency in the dose 75 mg per 3 ml intramuscularly and the uses are mild to moderate pain, trauma patient or during and after surgery. Narcotic analgesics in emergency. In these cases, injection pentazosin is given in the dose 30 to 60 mg per ml intramuscularly or subcutaneously and this is used to treat moderate to severe pain. It is given in trauma patients and also used as pre-anesthetic medication. Now analgesic combinations. Out of the combinations, paracetamol and ibuprofen combination is the most common combination. So the drugs that get formed by this combination are Combiflam, Ibujesic Plus, 
renofen, flexon, etc. Paracetamol can also be given with acyclofenag, then also with nimesolide and also paracetamol, diclofenac sodium and seracopeptidase is another combination analgesic. Recent advances in NSAIDs. This includes NSAID strips and NSAID sprays. In NSAID strips, the active ingredient is 81 mg aspirin and the sole purpose is pain relief. These are some NSAID sprays. Here are some easy ways to remember certain important things. To remember the beneficial effects of NSAIDs, you can remember the five A's. In order to remember the contraindications of NSAIDs, remember the word BARS, B-A-R-S. Also, you can remember the mnemonic painted by Sophia in order to remember the NSAID classification. Thank you.